Hello, my name is Mike Guy, and in this video we are going to look at creating controls dynamically or programmatically in our series on Windows programming with C Sharp. We've seen before the traditional way of creating uh, controls, uh, that is dragging them from the toolbox and putting them on a form. I have a blank form here, I just I just expanded it a little bit, that's all I did is click to drag there. Uh, I'm going to go to the toolbox and I'm going to add a button. And this is the traditional way of adding a control to the form. All right, um, Just drag and drop. And everything is sort of handled for us behind the scenes. Well, now I'm going to show you how we can create it uh, programmatically or dynamically. So I'm going to change the text of this button to say generate. All right, And I'm going to go ahead and do something in there. So I'm going to double click in there. All right. Now inside here, we're just going to create another button. All right. We'll make it real simple. Uh, we're just going to create ourselves another button. So what I want to do is I'm going to do button new btn equals new button, just like that. And I can give it some properties. All right. So I could say new btn uh, dot name equals, we'll just say it, it's We'll just say it's one. Why not? Um, no, that, never mind. Let's call it uh, uh, custom button. I don't like one. There we go. All right. And so we can say uh, new btn dot text, and we'll say this one also says generate. All right. Um, and then we will say um, new btn dot location, and we will make this one equal to new point. Point is just uh, some uh, x and y value. All right, so uh, there's four different things we could do. Um, uh, a drawing point, a uh, size, or an x and a y. I'm going to do an x and y. I'm going to say 12 and 12. All right, um, and that's it. All right, so what I can do now is when I run this, I'm going to hit generate, and let's see what happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. We are actually creating a button. We're, 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 we are doing it and we're setting up all those properties. The problem is that we're never seeing it because it's never added to the form. Or it's never registered. Hey, form, you have this new button. It's created and then it just sort of goes away. So that's the last step of creating this control. I'm going to say this dot controls. That's the collection that the form uses to keep track of all its controls that add. And we are going to say new btn add this button. Oops. Add this button. That's what we want. And when I run it, we see, hey, we created a new button. There it is. It's added the form. Doesn't do anything yet, but we can actually do some pretty neat stuff with this. All right. So let's go ahead and add some new functionality to this. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to have a private int count in my constructor. I'm going to say count equals zero. And now what I want to do is I'm going to keep track of how many buttons I have generated. All right. So I'm going to say count uh, plus plus right here because we've created a new button. And now my name is actually going to be custom button plus count. So it'll be custom button one, custom button two, custom button three, so on and so forth. All right. And its new location is going to be, hold on, I got to see what the size of a traditional button is. Uh, traditional button is 75 by 23. Okay, so that becomes useful. All right, so what we're going to say, the new location is going to be 12 plus 75 times count minus 1. Okay, um, that'll make sense here in a second. Okay, uh, and so now we can run this. I'll hit generate, 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 generate. Of course, it'll keep going off screen. All right. And now we can create a bunch of buttons. All right. Better yet, we can assign event handlers to these buttons. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So now, after I've placed its location, I'm going to say new uh, button dot click. All right. Which is its event handler. All right. And I'm going to say plus equals. That's what we have to do. We have to say, hey, we're, we're adding a new event handler to your list of event handlers. All right. Equals. 
I don't like that spacing there. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the event handler for button one click. Just like that. All right. Um, no parentheses. Even though we're just using the name of the function for its memory address. We're not actually calling the function. So no, no parentheses. And now what we're saying is when I create a button, the button is going to have this event handler right here as its click event. And we can see this. I'm going to go ahead and run it. I'll hit generate, generate, generate. So each button can create a new button. All right. Pretty darn neat. Okay. And we can do this with any, uh, any control, and it works exactly the same way. I'm just doing it with buttons because buttons tend to be a little bit more fun. All right. There is one problem uh, with this uh, particular setup in that I don't have a handle to my buttons in variable form after this program leaves. We see we just create a new button and we add it and then it just sort of is in memory. All right, we know its name, custom button, potentially one, custom button two, custom button three. But if we really wanted to keep hold of these buttons to keep using them in code, we may want to create an array of buttons or something like that up at the top so we can just sort of have them as variables. All right, we don't have to. I'm just saying it's easier that way. If we don't, then we have to search the controls for that button every time we want to use it. All right. Um, so I can give you an example of, of exactly what I mean. All right. So let's go ahead up here and let's say private button, my buttons. And we'll also do uh, private int size, just keeping this simple. All right. Let's say we want to create a four by four grid of buttons. Okay. In here, I will do size equals four. All right. And let's come down here to this code now. All right. Let's kind of work with, around how we're doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't need count anymore because we're keeping it all in an array. Let me get rid of this code here. And now let's go ahead. Oh yeah, I can get rid of it here too. Now let's go ahead and use this array of buttons. Uh, to, to create something pretty neat on the screen. So I'm going to say for, or actually I'm going to say uh, my buttons equals new button size times size. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Button size times size, because we want it to be four by four. So size times size, all right? Um, so a total of 16. And then I'm going to say for int i, equal to zero, i is less than size times size, i plus plus, and inside here we'll create all our buttons. So I can say buttons sub i, oops, my buttons sub i equals new button, and then my buttons sub i, I'm actually just going to copy paste that, because I'll be typing it a lot, my buttons sub i dot name is going to equal, in this case, we'll just say i dot two string, so it'll, the name will be one, two, three, four. It's kind of boring and generic, but you know, this is just an example. All right, and then I'm going to do my buttons dot size. All right, in this case, uh, we're just going to do new size, and we're just going to make it 50 by 50. All right, so they fit all nice and neat. All right, and then we were going to do buttons Oh, not buttons, my buttons. I don't know why I keep doing that. Dot location. And in this case, we're going to say new point. And this is where things are going to get interesting. I want a grid of four by four. All right. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of math on this because I'm treating a, a single dimension array as a multi-dimensional array for speed and efficiency. So I'm going to say 10 plus 50 times I modulus size. Okay, that's how I'm going to break everything down into rows. And then I need to break them down into, or I'm sorry, into columns. And then I need to break them down into rows for our Y. So I'm going to say something like 30 plus 50 times I divided by size. That might seem a little complex. We'll talk about it here in a second. All right. And then I'm going to, I'm not going to do an event handler for these buttons. Um, Actually, that's not true. I am going to do an event handler for these buttons. I'm going to do my buttons dot click 
plus equals new event handler uh, and that new event handler I don't have one yet but I'm just gonna call it button click and I'll write it here in a second all right yeah it's gonna give me an error um, and then I'm gonna say this dot controls dot add my button sub I all right so now what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through 16 times, 4 times 4, and we're going to create 16 buttons and we're going to position them. This is basically saying like uh, modulus returns a remainder. So at 0, uh, 0 modulus 4 is going to be uh, 0, then 0 modulus 4 is 1, 0 modulus 4 is 2, 0 modulus 4 is 3, right? So we move it to the left, or move it to the right, so 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4 modulus 4 is 0, so boom, we're back up to the left again. 5 modulus 4 is 1, 6 modulus 4 is 2, 7 modulus 4 is 3. So again, there's that 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 8 modulus 4 is 0 again. Boom, we're back to the left, okay? And then this is just div division here. You can probably figure that one out. Um, let's go ahead and create this click event here. So I'm going to say private void button click, and it's going to be object sender event args e, and this one's simply going to be message box dot show and we will show um, button oh, button sender dot oops and cast it in parentheses like this is a shorthand way of doing it button sender dot name just like that so before when I cast in, in my previous video when I cast the button I did button my button equals uh, button sender like this I can just cast it all like this all right, put everything in parentheses and then hit dot name. It's just a shorthand way of doing it. It's the same. It achieves the same effect, but this is a shorthand temporary way of doing it. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna hit generate. Boom, and we get a grid of four by four. And I can click that and see ten, five, zero, four, seven, thirteen. 14 and 15 right so all 16 buttons so we can actually achieve something pretty neat there and not only that but since we did it with an array I have a handle to all of those buttons in case I ever need to remove them or change their name or change what they say if I need to do it programmatically if I didn't have them in an array or if I didn't have an easy way of accessing them right I would have to find them by doing a search through all of the form controls and depending on how many controls you have that could be a pretty costly procedure as far as calculation time all right um, now granted this particular example is not all that useful I actually just built a memory game in, in Windows program with C sharp uh, for something else and so I already had the algorithm so I kind of wanted to play around with it in this video so that's why you're seeing this um, there are a lot of more useful things we can do and you don't necessarily need to have an array you could have a single button variable that you store or you don't have to store them at all if you really just want to search but uh, and you may never even need to search it all depends on your programming needs uh, what you're doing inside uh, the application so Okay, uh, so this is just a, a quick video here uh, to show you how to create our own controls programmatically. As you can see there, um, we can we can do some neat stuff. Uh, all the properties that we can see in the design mode, we also have access to uh, behind the scenes here in the code. Um, and we can create all sorts of different controls. There, every control is creatable through code. Um, it doesn't have to just be done through the designer. Uh, even event handlers can be added. So. Uh, that's going to conclude this video, and this is going to conclude part six of the video series.